the Ultimate Table Saw 10 in Jig has a fine adjuster. And this enables me to tweak the position of the tenon within the thickness of the workpiece. So that if I'm making a face frame, it ends up perfectly flush, not just nearly flush. This is an M6 thread. So one complete turn is 1.0 millimeters. And if I move it just six minutes of the clock, that will give me 0.1 millimeters, which is a thickness, the thickness of a human hair. As the Bristol lever moves in and out, it carries with it the middle layer because of this fork here. And if the middle layer moves over, left or right, then the top carriage does as well. And that's how we can uh, tweak the position of the, of the tenon. There's a lock underneath, so if I want to move it a quarter of a millimeter, I undo the lock. I set this at 12 o'clock to start with, and then if I move it a quarter turn like that, that is 0.25 millimeters, and then I'll lock it up again. So there is a steel plate on the, on the edge of the bottom layer, and this is how I made it. This is another one of those jigs that I use not very often, but when I do need it, it is the bee's knees. It's a homemade horizontal borer, and it just uses an electric drill, and it's made out of MDF. And um, I'm gonna use it to drill a hole in the middle of this board. So let's try it. Let's turn the, this on. I was very surprised at just how hard this HPL was to drill. It hasn't done my nice, expensive drill bit very much good at all. I suggest that you use a sharp bit that you can afford to throw away afterwards. Wow, that was hard. But I can see I'm in exactly the right place. So good. It didn't like that material, did it? But look at that bang in the middle. Bang in the middle, look. <laughs> this piece of steel has an M6 hole tapped through it. The steel itself came off the hood of the pram, the stroller, that I was pushed around in over 60 years ago. <laughs> I think we can even get them lined up. Look at that. Wow. Something sharp. Right, that's that done. If you're making this out of MDF and you need to drill into the edge grain, it's no good just drilling to the plain MDF, but it works very well if first of all, you drill a six millimeter hole and fill it with a wooden dowel there and there. And then when you drill in and screw in there, you're actually screwing into solid wood and not into the edge grain of the MDF. I think I can probably reuse this part. It's a bit scruffy, but it'll clean up nicely. I'm gonna make a new fork because this material is slightly thinner than the MDF and it's looking a bit shabby as well. So I've got some homemade plywood, cherry, which I'm gonna make a new fork, which is gonna fit on the middle piece over the bottom. I'm routing a slot in the fork, several shallow passes as before. When I offered it up to the jig, I realized that the slot was far too long. So I just snipped a bit off before going over to the drill press. I've drilled and countersunk two fixing holes. And now I'm using a force a bit to make the nice clean inside corners. It's not necessary, of course, but I do like my jigs to have a little bit of finesse if at all possible.
the cherry parts, the fork, and the backstop and kerf compensation knob mounts, which were both salvaged from the original jig, were given a couple of coats of hard wax oil. I am very pleased with how well they've come up. I think this is working. That's where we at. And the proof of the pudding. Not sure why I've got two different sized washers on there, but still. The proof of the pudding. Yay, look at that. It'll be too long because these are thinner than the originals. So I'll need to cut that down a bit. But that's going in there very nicely. And if we get it as far as tightening up. Yes, it needs a fraction. And that doesn't feel as if it's about to strip. I've just got to trim a little bit off for there. Oh, I am pleased with that. That's very nice.